Hello everyone, how's it going and hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be showing you part two to my procedural city tutorial. We're going to be looking at how to make the materials for it, both for daytime and nighttime. And we're going to be setting up this really interesting customizable nighttime material that just by changing one value, you can completely randomize the amount of lights that are on in a building at any time across multiple objects. Really cool and powerful technique. But before we get there, I'm going to show you a couple of different other techniques on how to make the materials and then come back to this one at the end. So starting off, we're going to take our cube from part one, which by the way, if you haven't seen part one, please go check that out first before coming here, because I'll show you how to get this original scene set up. We're going to make a new material for one of our cubes and we're going to add press control T and it will add a texture node and a mapping and texture coordinate node. If you go to a website like cgtextures.com, you can just download a seamless texture of a building, which I've got here. As you see, I've got a daytime version and a nighttime version of it, which you see if we apply here and have it unwraps. To be honest, <laughs> it looks all right because it's seamless. It will wrap all the way around the building and will look OK look all right but you'll see it's on the roofs as well and it's it's not looking too too great plus the material is completely flat there's no reflection on the windows nothing like that so how are we going to fix this well firstly let's start off with the nighttime material because that's sort of a, a more visually easy way to understand this so what we're going to do is switch over to a nighttime version of the texture and we're going to add a color ramp node as well as a emission shader. We're going to connect the texture color into the color ramp. We're also going to add a mix shader and connect our principled BSDF and our emission together. Now, as you'll notice, the factor is either changing from complete emission value, which if we turn it up here, you can see, or to the just the image on its own. But obviously that's not what we want. We want the lights on the material to be emitting the emission shader and then everything else to just be flat. So what we're going to do is use this color ramp, plug that into the factor and because it's using the texture we've input, we can actually use the black and white values of that material in order to mask out the emission. Now this is reversed so as you can see the lights are dull and the buildings letting out light. So if we switch these over on the color ramp, there we go. Basically the lighter color from the windows is now emitting that bright color from the emission shader and then the black values of the rest of the building is not it's plain it's just nothing it's just that principled bsdf we change the color on the emission you can see a bit better what's going on turn that emission up and very, very basic and not very good and also the roofs everything's been uv wrapped the wrong way so what we want to do is turn this array modifier off and just select the roof panels only just make sure you get all of the faces there and we just want to add a another material in here and I've already made this concrete material before, but you can just add a plain material. All it is is a principal BSDF with a concrete image texture applied. And that's all it is just to create that sort of plain building look. And now all of the roofs will update on the city because it's using that procedural node setup that we set up in the last video. So that's looking much better. There's no lights coming out of the roofs. And we also want to apply this to our secondary building as well. So let's apply that same material. And if we just unwrap it, move it around a bit, you'll see that, yeah, basically anywhere where there is a window with light coming out of it, it is adding that emission from it. And then anywhere where it's just plain dark with the brickwork, there is no light coming and it's just the texture on its own. Now, this is great. This is right. Um, that's one way of doing the nighttime texture. Let's have a look at how to do the same, but with glass windows during the day. It's basically the exact same technique, except we're going to remove the emission and replace it with a glossy shader for reflection. So if we switch out the material for a sort of daytime building texture, remove that emission and put a glossy shader in there and do exactly the same setup as we had before, except we're just gonna plug a glossy in instead of the emission, set that up, and then just play around with the color ramp as much as you need to, maybe add a brightness and contrast node in between the texture and the color ramp as well, just to have a bit more control play around with it as much as you need to and you i mean this isn't the most accurate way of doing it but it's if your base material has enough of a contrast in there that should work ideally really you'd want a roughness map to match with your texture the texture i got didn't have that but that would be a really easy way to be able to tell the material what part of it is going to be reflective and what part isn't 
And again, because everything is set up in the geometry node setup that we made in the last video, it all updates seamlessly on our setup just by changing the material of that one building. And this looks kind of like a sort of futuristic sort of Neo Tokyo vibe in daylight. And yeah, that's one way of making these sort of daylight and nighttime materials, but there's a much better way of doing it. There, there is a much better way of doing it. I'd recommend doing that way if you want to speed things up, but let's have a look at doing it uh, the more effective way. So what we want to do, let's go to our tool building over here and we just want to apply that base concrete texture to the whole material. And this section has an array and I'd recommend doing it with an array modifier because what we want to do is actually go in and select some random faces on the side of our building, just completely random, pick a few. And what we want to do is add a new material in here just called this one windows for now and we're going to assign that and you'll see it's going to repeat all the way up the side of the array but because we've only done it on one side of the building when we look at our geometry node setup yeah it's missing from on the other side so just going to speed this up here we're going to quickly go around the other sides click a few faces assign that windows material and it's looking pretty good now all four sides of the buildings have some windows on them and if we bring the roughness down and bring the metallic up, we'll start to get a sort of nice glass looking material. And it's looking all right. However, every building is basically exactly the same on each side. Uh, the, the windows don't vary. They're repeated up and down and also across the full face of every single building that's projected. And that's not too bad for just the windows on their own. But if we wanted to add some lights to them, we could just change that window material to an emission shader and there we go we have the lights there because it's all basically duplicating upwards on the array and then obviously on the geometry node but how do we create even more variation that's what we want to do we want to randomize this as much as possible because no building has the same amount of lights on so in theory all we want to do is mix a glossy shader with an emission shader so let's get that glossy shader make the roughness of, yeah 0 0.1 0 0.2 add a mix shader in there and blend these two together because even if a light is off we still want there to be a reflection from the glass now again this mix shader on its own is either switching between all the light on or just glass on its own which is not what we want we want there to be some with the emission coming out some with the glass but before we do that we want to add a bit of color variation as well because not all lights are exactly the same color so what we're going to do is add this color amp and add a few colors and change the blend mode from ease to constant so we have sort of solid colors and let's make an orange bring that along there let's add another one change that to a sort of a reddish orange color and then let's see yeah, let's go one more and make it a more pinky pinky color now obviously nothing's happening here it's either it's all orange and make sure you change this constant so what we want to do is just randomize these colors a bit because yeah we don't want them all to be the same color how do we tell the objects how to do that well let's add an input and let's add a object info in here and you'll see there's a randomize or a random input now if we put that into the factor there we go you'll see it's basically using the object info of random positioning in 3d space to say which part of that color ramp it's going to use and let's just dilute these colors a bit so they blend together a bit better so they kind of look like they're within the same sort of color scheme and that's yeah that's looking a bit better and there you go just to add a bit of variation in the color just so it's not all the same because then it's a bit too boring a bit too uniform now you might think that in order to randomize the amount of windows that are on that we actually use that object info and the random to plug into the factor and that's what's going to do it but actually it, it doesn't it, it doesn't do anything at all to be honest nothing really happens <laughs> uh which i thought would be the, the case i thought it would do something but no it, it's not really working in that way because the object info is different because this is just one object and it, it, it's we need to tell it to use the uv texture to displace the lighting rather than the actual physical positioning of the material in 3d space like the lighting is the color of the light between each buildings is different per building but we want this mask to affect the actual texture so let's add a color ramp in now let's also add a math node in as well i want to change that to multiply add let's connect those two up together and plug that into the factor now if we change the values here 
on the multiplayer ad node, you'll see we're getting a bit of control over how many lights turn on. But again, it's either all or nothing. It's really not doing anything that we couldn't do before. It's just either all or nothing. Even the color ramp node here doesn't really do anything. So what we need to do is add in a texture and use the texture to control which parts of the material are going to be on or off. Now just for demonstration purposes, let's use a noise texture and plug that into the value of the multiply add node. Bring the scale down. And what you'll see here is that when we use this multiplier factor on the math node, it will use the texture in order to mask out the emission from the glossy. So some windows will use the emission shader and some will use the glossy. And you'll notice that throughout the rest of the buildings, it's being completely randomized. It's not just applying it to that one building off on the right here. It is doing it per objects and completely randomizing it. And you can use the values, play around with both those values on that math node. You see, if we go in close, you'll start to see the mask of the noise texture itself on each window, which obviously isn't ideal. So play around with the scale and you might want to choose maybe a square texture like a checkerboard or a brick texture. But yeah, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm using a, a noise texture, which from far away, you really, really can't tell. But yeah, there you go. So actually some of these windows are glossy and reflective as if they're not on and some of them have light. We're just going to apply the same technique to this building on the side here. Pick a few different random faces, apply that same material and automatically again everything will update on the city and if we change that those factors there there we go we can change how many lights are on either a few of them on or the whole city every single light is on and you get complete freedom to control how much you want you could do a really cool sort of time lapse if you wanted to where all the windows are completely glossy you could make every window glossy if you wanted to add this material to it if you scale the city up as well it will all obviously keep in line with that um, and then, yeah, you could do sort of a time lapse where you can keyframe that factor. So over time, it goes from all the windows are glossy and then a few lights turn on here and there with the emission. And then eventually all the lights are on and everything's emissive and you've got a full city, full like neon city. And it looks really cool. So that's it. A couple of techniques there. The latter technique obviously being, I think, the best way to create completely customizable and a way of showing city lights on buildings, allowing you to control them. There is another way to do it with geometry nodes to control individual sections of a building but that's way too complicated for this tutorial and i don't want to get into that because it that needs a whole video on its own so i will go into that on another video but i hope for now this was a really quick and easy way to set up some materials on your buildings if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below that's it from me if you enjoyed the video please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content thank you very much and i'll see you all in the next video